The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Thirty days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, and this ain't leap year, thank heavens. Thursday the 7th. Casey! Uh, what? Hey, don't scare me like that. Casey, we're famous. Famous? We've been on the air just a year today for Anchor Hawking, and they're famous. Right, Ethelbert. Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Death in Lover's Lane. <laughs> A moonlight night, a lonely road, a parked car in which, close together, sit a man and woman. Ah, romance. And then, from the dense woods that line the road, the sharp snapping of a twig. Bill. Yeah, something's moving behind those trees. A man. I see. He's coming this way. What's your car doing here? Is that any of your business, mister? I think so. I'm a police detective. Bill. Quiet, Nora. What do you want, officer? Stay where you are. He's pointing a gun at us. What's the big idea, fella? If you're a cop, let's see your badge. This gets my badge. Both of you stick up your hands. My hands are coming up, mister. With this! You got him in the arm, Bill. Knock the gun out of his hand. He's running. All right, you phony. Now stop or I'll kill you. I'm a real cop, and this is your last warning. Okay! <laughs> He made the woods. He's getting away. I'm going after him. Now, blow your whistle, Nora. I'll signal the boys to close in. This guy is the Lover's Lane Killer. The, uh, the man got away from you in those woods, officer? Yeah, that's right, Miss Williams. But uh, Nora Ryan, the policewoman who was working this trap with me, had a prowl car here in a few minutes, and they radioed the precinct station to have the woods surrounded. The guy can't possibly get away. I wish I were sure of that, Dino. Our guys have been searching those woods for an hour now and haven't found him. You should have shot him down when he started to run. Well, I'm sorry I didn't do a better job, Captain. Logan, why do you pick on Bill Dano? Why, Casey? Yeah. He and that policewoman have been laying traps for this Lover's Lane murderer... Ever since he began killing people three or four months ago. Well, a guy walked right into one tonight, and Dano and Nora Ryan sprung it on him hard. They did the best they could. Killer's bottled up in these woods, wounded and without a gun. You're sure to find him when daylight comes. Uh, if this killer gets away after we hit him in our hands... Do you think it's really the Lover's Lane murderer who came after Dano and Mrs. Ryan tonight? Well, we can't be sure, Miss Williams. The only people who've seen the Lover's Lane murderer in action didn't live long enough to describe him. He found their bodies slumped in cars parked on lonely roads like this one. The dead bodies are six couples so far with 32 slugs through their heads. Now, the guy who walked into one of our police traps tonight may have intended nothing more than a holdup. Well, the gun that Dano shot out of his hand was a 32. Well, there are a lot of 32 revolvers in illegal circulation, Miss Williams. Uh, ballistics hasn't had time to compare the gun he dropped with a murder slug. So no, of course not. This guy does prove to be the Lover's Lane murderer. I will have had a bum hunch. What do you mean? I've had an idea the killer was a woman. Hey, I've played around with the notion that a woman was behind these things myself. Yeah? A dame whose love life hadn't been so good and who resented other people finding romance under the moonlight in parked cars. Well, what about the little card with I'm death printed on it, the one the killer always leaves? And those cards could have been left by either a man or a woman, Miss Williams. Our handwriting experts say they show no definite sex characteristics. I know, Logan, but... 
Well, as I say, my hunch wasn't very strong. Captain. There's a gunshot. Yeah. They must have found him. No, it came from in there. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, so am I. You stay here, Annie. Oh, no, I will not. Uh, kid, look, where there's shooting going on, no woman should I be I don't present. call one shot shooting. I'm going with you. What's happened? Captain Logan, come out. I'm coming, Dano, but... What? There's our man, Captain. The same guy who pulled a gun on Mrs. Ryan and me. Good job, Dano. You got him this time. Yes, and for keeps. Huh? Oh, I didn't shoot him, Captain. You didn't? No, no, I heard a shot and came here in the woods in this direction and found the guy lying here. Well, who did shoot him if you didn't? Our other cops are too far away. They're just getting here now. Well, I don't know. Hey, Logan, there's a clean hole in this dead guy's head, and it wasn't made by a police 38th. Yeah, it looks more like a 32. Captain, beside the body. Yeah, I see. Casey. A printed card. I'm dead. The sign of the Lover's Lane murderer. Then he just killed this guy. And this guy wasn't the Lover's Lane murderer. Our story will continue in just a moment. Extra, extra, read all about it. Great new discovery makes beer and ale easy to enjoy. It's a new kind of bottle. A different kind of bottle. It requires no deposit. No fussing with pennies. You don't have to return it. No bother with empty. Just pour out the beer and throw the bottle away. It's light as a feather. No arm-weary lugging. It's sturdy and compact. Saves space in the icebox. It's easy to open. And safe to drink from. It belongs on the table. It's at home on a picnic. And brother, what flavor? Flavor. That true brewery flavor. Protected by glass. As only glass can protect it. Yes, the revolutionary new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle is sweeping America. For flavor that's brewery bright, demand beer in bottles. For safety and convenience, demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle. Product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Oh, Logan, why be sore at your cops? When they heard that shot, they naturally did the same thing as you and Ann and I did. They investigated. And while all of them were making for this point where the shot came from, the killer who left that I'm death card was making his getaway. Oh, I don't think he's gotten away, Captain. He's still trapped in the woods. You'll get him. Mm, or her. I've still got that little hunch about a woman being the killer. Now that the guy who tried to stick up Dano and Mrs. Ryan has been put in the clear by getting shot through the head, well, maybe I'm right. Is that um, I'm death card like all the others you found, Captain? Yeah, Miss Williams, they're all the same. And I think ballistics will say that the 32 slug found in this guy's head came from the same gun that killed those six couples. I'm betting the same way, Casey. And I have the same cockeyed theory you have about the reason for this latest killing. A lover's lane murderer, whether man or woman, must be a psychopathic case. And such people have nursed terrific egos as well as terrific grudges. And he'd have gotten a kick out of shooting this man practically under the noses of you cops. Yeah, that's it, Miss Williams. And the shooting served a practical purpose, too. It drew most of the searchers to one point and enlarged the guy's chances for a getaway. Captain Logan. Yes, Sergeant? We've just found out the killer may have gotten out of these woods. Uh, what? There's an old dry culvert passes under the road on the northeast, and it's grown all over with bushes, but... Looks as if our killer knew about it and used it. That's just swell. I've uh, learned something else, Captain. Maybe good news. That I'd like to hear. There's a half-crazy old guy lives in a cave in the hills just north of here. One of them hermits. Hates people and he knows every inch of these woods. They say he especially hates young people, Captain. Yeah? Hey, that sounds like a pretty good description of the Lover's Lane murderer, Captain. They say he lives in a cave, Sergeant. Yeah, the only name folks know the old guy by is Old Eve. Uh, we'll pay Old Eve a visit right away. Captain Logan... Captain Logan. Who's calling? It's me, Bill Dano. Oh. Hey, who's that with you? A uh, little guy, uh, uh, I mean a gentleman I met out near the Northeast Road. He's given me some very interesting information I think you ought to know about. I'm Clarence Butterworth, Captain. Professor Clarence Butterworth. I have a little summer place near here where I relax while the college is closed. I teach uh, psychology at Sylvester Normal. Uh, glad to know you, Professor. Uh, no. Captain, uh, if I may... Like many other people of the neighborhood, I was naturally attracted by the large number of police cars and officers searching these woods tonight. And uh, when I learned the reason for their activities, I, I introduced myself to uh, this detective. Uh, tell the captain what you told me, Professor. Uh, yes, of course, Officer Dano. Uh, captain, 
as one familiar with his section. I think I can suggest a, a suspect for your investigation. I've just been hearing about the hermit Old Eve. Oh, oh to... yes. Old Eve, a pronounced misanthrope. A what? Uh, a hater of mankind. He would naturally fall under suspicion, but I don't think a creature of his limited mentality capable of successfully committing such a series of crimes. You see, Captain, I'm... Uh, if I may be permitted, uh, I'm a student of crime. Yes. Oh, you are? Yes. As a professor of psychology, the subject of crime falls naturally into my orbit. Okay, who's your suspect? A, uh, a woman. A woman? Uh, yes. Mr. Uh, Casey's the name. Tell us about this woman. Uh, of course, Mr. Casey. Uh, she's a person of considerable wealth and, in my opinion, of strong psychopathic tendencies occasioned by an unhappy marriage. Her husband was, uh, uh, if this young lady will pardon me, uh, something of a philanderer. Oh, hubby played around with other dames. Huh? Uh, <clears throat> yes. According to neighborhood gossip, she surprised him in a parked car one evening with a young... Uh, female person, and attacked the two of them with a butcher knife. Fortunately, her husband was able to disarm her before he could do any great damage. He afterwards had her committed to a sanitarium for mental treatment, uh, an institution from which uh, she was released only six months ago, following his death. Six months ago, Logan. Yeah, this thing checks in a lot of ways, Casey. Now, who is this woman, Professor, and where does she live? Her name is Mrs. Norma Julian, and she occupies a small estate about a half a mile northeast of these woods. That culvert's on the northeast, Captain. Sergeant, we're not overlooking any bets, so you take a detail and get that hermit old Eve for questioning. Now, Professor, I'll have you take me and Officer Dano to Mrs. Norma Julian. Also Miss Williams and me, Logan. Mm -hmm, definitely us, Captain. Okay. Come on, Professor, let's go. Very well. Oh. This will be a most interesting, most interesting indeed to an amateur criminologist like myself. Dear me, now I have an opportunity to see how real professionals work. I'm Norma Julian. What do you policemen want? I've just been talking to your servants, Mrs. Julian. They say that you've been away from home most of the evening, that you returned only a few minutes before we arrived. I'm frequently away from home. What about it? Well, I'd like to know where you've been. It's none of your business. But I've been out walking. Alone? Alone. I prefer my own company. Did you meet anyone during your walk? I tried to avoid meeting anybody. Where'd your walk take you tonight? North of here, in the hills. You weren't south of here in the woods. No, I was not. Why? There are burrs in your skirt, Mrs. Julian, and those woods are full of burrs. There are plenty of burrs in the hills. What's the purpose of this questioning? And how dare you policemen bring that young woman into my house? Oh, me? Yes, you. You're the sort of woman that stole my husband, the kind I... that makes people say I am crazy. You're the kind that... Stop it, Dino. Hey, Dino, she's going to hurt me with that thing. She's under control, oh, Annie. I've got the handcuffs on her. Well, oh, she's crazy, all right. I'm satisfied she's the one we've been looking for. Take her to headquarters, man, and get the psychiatrist to give her a going over while I search this house for a thirty-two revolver. Yes, sir. Come on, Mr. Julian, you're going to tell us... Dear me, dear me, what a violent woman. Uh, Professor, I'm very grateful to you for your tip. Well, I'm happy to have been of service, Captain. We amateur criminologists can serve a purpose, can't we? <laughs> you served a double one tonight, Professor. Yeah, thank you. You made a little hunch of mine pay off. Uh, uh, a uh, hunch, Mr. Casey? Yes, I had a feeling that the Lover's Lane murderer was a woman. Captain Logan! Huh? Captain Logan! What are you doing here, Sergeant? I've got the Lover's Lane murder, sir. What? You uh, let it, we know who he is. We got him surrounded. What are you talking about? Yes, what do you Old mean? Eve, the hermit. I took a couple of men, went to arrest him like the captain instructed. When we got in front of his cave, he started shooting. Started shooting? It's already winged one of our men. I had to call in reinforcements before I came here to get your further instructions, sir. There's a regular battle going on at that cave. But why is the old fool putting up a fight? He's not the murderer. But he is, sir. When he started shooting at us, he yelled the words on them cards and kept on yelling them. He says over and over, I'm deaf, I'm deaf. <laughs> Listen, Captain. Uh, I hear it, Dano. Hey, that one came close. Annie, keep down behind these rocks. That old guy shoots straight. No, I'm keeping down, Casey. Uh, he isn't shooting so often now, Captain. Uh, maybe he's running short ammunition. 
Yeah, we got to get up there with the tear gas, Bob, and smoke him out. Don't look like there's any shelter between here and that cave. You'll kill anybody who tried to climb that exposed hill. We'll go around the hill. Get at him from the rear. But the cave has only one entrance. The opening is in front, and he's watching that. <coughs> and how? Uh, heads down, everyone. Uh, Captain, I'm sure the cave has two openings. You are, Professor? Uh, reasonably so. During one of my rambles about the neighborhood last summer, I discovered an opening covered by trees that apparently led downward to the rear of Old Eve's cave. Well, could you find it again? I believe I can. Sergeant, you and your man keep that maniac's attention. Start shooting and draw his return fire to exhaust his ammunition. Dano, you come with the professor and me. Yes, sir. I'm going to be a part of that expedition, Logan. Mm -hmm, and me. No, no, Miss Williams. If Casey wants to take chances, that's his business, but I'll have no women. You stay here, Annie, where it's safe. Oh, oh. safe, huh? Well, safer. Now lead the way, Professor, and keep under shelter. Let's go. Very well. See you later, Annie. Oh, I hope so. Nobody get to early. You bum chum dick, chum dick, How's that hunch of yours now, Casey, about a woman being the lover's lane murderer? That hunch, Logan, just ain't around anymore. Uh, here's the opening, gentlemen. Piece of the cave, Logan. Say, Logan, how are you going to work this thing? Drop in a tear gas bomb? No. Well, this hole's wide enough to squeeze through, so I'm going down. Hmm. That old guy will put a rifle bullet right through you. Well, he hasn't returned a shot to our guys for a long time now, Casey. He may be out of shells. Anyway, he's being kept so busy watching his front door. It's a big chance, pal. Yeah, Dano will follow and cover me. So will I. You're having a gun. So what? So you're nuts. Uh, gentlemen, I think you're extremely foolhardy to venture in there. Uh, it's got to be done, Professor. Here goes. Dear me. This is exciting. And I'm down, Dino. Come on and be quiet. There's a bend in the cave and that nut can't see us from where he is. I'm with you, sir. Me too. I also... Uh, Professor. I simply couldn't miss this, Captain. And I know you won't let me get hurt. Well, keep quiet then and keep back. Come on, Dino. All right. Hey, Captain. Yeah? Look, there's the old guy now. Crouching behind that barricade. His rifle's on the floor. He's out of ammunition. Hey, Logan, he's got something else in his hands. It's not a gun. <gasps> it's a bottle. There you go. Stick up your hands, Eve. We got you. No, no, keep back. Keep back or I throw this bottle. It's for nitroglycerin. Oh, nitroglycerin? Oh, it's all the conjuration. I'm dead. I am. I'm dead. Don't throw that. He's throwing it. Uh, oh, it didn't explode. Uh, it, was, it was just a blow. I got the oh, thing, Logan. Uh, stick it in your pocket, Casey. Uh, give it to me later. Yeah, I'll do oh, that. you... Uh, yeah, I clipped this old maniac with my gun butt. Sure did. He's out cold. Ah, so is the professor. The professor? What's the matter with him? Yeah. The little guy fainted when he pitched that bottle. <laughs> well, I almost did myself. <coughs> yeah, well, me both, Dano. Well, maybe you guys think I took it easy. Oh, boy, he might have had the real McCoy in that bottle. But anyway, we finally got the lover's lane murderer. I hope. <laughs> Here's another bottle of beer, Casey. You look as if you needed it. Yeah, I do, Ethelbert. This has been quite a night, Ethelbert. I should imagine, Miss Williams, from what you've told me. Is that crazy old hermit the real lover's lane murderer? We don't know. He's such a fruitcake. The cops don't get any sense out of him, even now that he's come to. We didn't go back to headquarters with him because I had to write my story, and Casey had a lot of pictures to get ready for the engravers. Yeah, I'll have to go to headquarters later and give Logan this bottle of... Nitroglycerin. <laughs> Excitement, we both forgot about it. Is that the bottle of stuff the old guy threatened you with? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like greasy dishwater or cold soup, doesn't it? You're... You're sure it ain't real nitroglycerin, huh? Oh, oh, oh. If it was, pal, I wouldn't be here. When stuff like nitro gets thrown around, things blow up. I've heard it don't stand for rough treatment. That's right. Uh, Logan will want that little bottle of dishwater for evidence, I suppose. Oh, huh? sure. Cops always want everything. How about the woman, that, uh, Mrs. Julian, who was arrested first? She's another nut. The police are holding her. She may still turn out to be the killer, Annie. Oh, Casey, you certainly hang on to a hunch. I... 
I haven't a hunch about this thing anymore, or even an idea. You know, this has been a tough night. Oh, well, it's not over yet, Casey. We have another job to do. You have? Mm-hmm. Yeah. City Desk wants a lot of personal dope on little Professor Butterworth. We're playing him up as the big hero of this evening's frolic, so we're going out in the sticks again and see him. He snapped out of his faint okay, huh? <laughs> sure. He was still kind of white around the gills when we saw him last. Well, come on, Annie. Let's get over with and call it a day. Okay. So long, Ethelbert. So long. Hey, Casey. Huh? <laughs> Take your bottle of nitroglycerin. My... Oh, <laughs> thanks for reminding me. <laughs> I wouldn't like it to explode sitting on my bar. Sure you know how to find the professor's house, Casey? Well, I have the address. Told me it's only a mile back of these woods. Mm. (sighs) This is a beautiful road in the moonlight. Yeah, yeah. No wonder so many couples have picked it as a lover's lane. (laughs) Don't see any neckers along here tonight. Well, after what's happened, they've naturally been frightened away. Uh, I wouldn't scare away that easy. Wouldn't you? No. Not if I had a real nice gal in the car with me. Oh, is that so? Yep. <laughs> I'll prove it. Here's a good parking place. Why, Mr. Casey. Ah. Nice moon. Huh, kid? Uh-huh. Well, now what? Well... Suppose you tell me what you think of Philadelphia's chances against Pittsburgh for seller position. Hmm. Suppose I tell you what I think of you as a romantic character. Oh, oh, no, you'd flatter me, Annie. Mr. I'd blister you. Annie, what do you mean? I only... Hey, wait, shh. Quiet. What? Someone in those woods. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Good evening, young people. The professor. Yeah, he's got a gun in his hand. Are you enjoying the moonlight? The beautiful, romantic moonlight? We were... Casey, Miss Williams. Yes, you... You didn't recognize us as soon as we did you, Professor. No, I didn't. That's an interesting gun you're pointing at us. It's a thirty-two, is isn't it? Yes. A thirty-two. Then, um, uh, you're uh, the... You're uh... quite right, Miss Williams. I'm dead. Uh, don't move, Mr. Casey. I... Well... One up for you, Professor. They tell me, uh, why are you a killer and the kind of killer you are? <laughs> oh, Mr. Casey, I know you're only trying to gain time, my boy, while you strive desperately to think of a way of escape. But I can spare a little time, and it'll be interesting to observe your desperation. That's uh, why you kill, to observe? Exactly, Miss Williams. Oh. I'm a student of human emotions. And the only way to know them is to have them. A man cannot understand the mind of a murderer until he himself has killed. And he cannot know the feeling of power until he has killed often. Until he has become as death itself. Oh, you're mad. Oh, no. Old Leaf is mad, and Mrs. Julian's mad, because they hate. I hate nothing. I love nothing. I merely observe. I weigh. I'm a true scientist. See? Yes, uh, Something I've just remembered. <laughs> and tell me, what is that, my boy? That guys who don't hate anything or love anything can be very much afraid of things happening to themselves. I don't understand. Maybe this will remind you. It's the bottle of nitroglycerin I took from old Eat. No, put that down. I'll put it down at your feet if you fire that gun. No, Drop that gun. Yes, I will. I will. He he dropped the gun, Casey, and fainted. He's out cold again. And I've got his gun. Now, why did he fall for your bluff? He knew that bottle didn't explode before. How how do I know what makes a madman tick, Annie? I, I didn't think he'd fall for that nitroglycerin gag. It was all I could think of, though. Hey, Casey, uh, here comes a police car. Yeah, we'll flag it down. Get this guy under handcuffs. Uh, it's stopping, Casey. Oh, Casey, I thought we'd never find you. Hi, Logan. Hey, what are you doing uh, here? for you, too. Your city desk told us you'd gone to the professor's house when we found nobody there. Never we... mind about that, Sergeant. 
Say, here's the professor. Never mind about that, Logan. Tell me... Yeah, give me that bottle. Bottle? Yeah, the one you took from old Eve. Huh? Oh, sure, here it is. Catch. Uh, no! Hey, you take it, Sergeant, and wrap it up carefully. Yeah, I'll say I will. Wrap it up carefully? Yeah. Old Eve swears it's the real stuff, Casey. He huh? told us how he made it. Yeah. The good Lord only knows why it didn't blow us all apart when he threw it. Must have just landed easy. Uh, that, that stuff? Is a uh, real... Nitro? Listen? Yeah, I recognize the soupy look of it now. Now? Oh, Casey, I think I'm going to faint. Annie, move over. I'll join you. We'll join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. How long has it been since you baked or even tasted a real homemade huckleberry or blueberry pie? Say, remember the symphony of color as your fork touches the tender golden brown crust and the rich deep purple juice spills out across your plate? Mmm, my oh my. You know, good cooks, and my mother among them, tell me this is one of the hardest pies in the world to bake properly. But there's one way to be sure of results with any kind of pie. Use Fire King oven glass pie plates. Crusts are always golden brown and fluffy. Pies bake all the way through without danger of scorching. And of course... That beautiful pale blue Fire King oven glass presents your pie at its best when you bring it to the table. Right now, you'll find at your 5 and 10 cent store or any other store selling household glass an unusual Fire King value. A big 9 and 1 half inch Fire King pie plate for only 25 cents or slightly more in distant cities. It's genuine Fire King oven glass guaranteed for a full two years against oven breakage. And remember... Its cost is only 25 cents. This Fire King oven glass pie plate is another product of Anchor Hocking. The most famous name in glass. So they got the professor in a nice, solid cell, huh, Casey? Yeah, he's out of circulation, Ethelbert. Gee, and you got him with that phony bottle of explosive that was nothing but greasy soup. Uh, yeah. We, uh, we haven't told you about that bottle, pal. The professor, having a good knowledge of chemistry, among other things, had recognized it from the first as real nitroglycerin. Real nit... What? Yeah. There was enough in that bottle to blow up a city block. And you had it... Setting in front of me on this bar tonight. That's just what we did. Mm. Ethelbert! Uh, uh, wait a minute, pal. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. I'm trying to, Casey. Uh, oh. Casey! He's... Ethelbert! Hey, don't, don't faint. Ethelbert. And he's... Walter. Walter! Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Crime Photographer is directed by John Deeks. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying goodnight for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town. So stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.